Hello, I'm Mike Thomas from LW Scientific, and today we're going to talk about how to clean a microscope. We offer a pro service kit, which comes with everything you need to clean your microscope. Um, and we're also going to talk about some common items that you might already have in your lab. So you could clean your microscope today with some common items that you have. Uh, we're going to talk about cleaning eyepieces, objectives, the Abbey condenser lens, and the base lens. There's where you're going to find 90% of your problems when cleaning a microscope. Okay, before we clean our optics, let's talk about that elusive speck that people sometimes see in their microscope. Um, it could be, I see it with my left eye, I see it with my right eye, I see it on all four objectives, maybe just one objective. Um, I'm not sure where it is. Maybe it's only on your camera screen. Um, so how do you find it? That's not that difficult if you follow a process of elimination. So first thing I'm going to do is spin an eyepiece as I'm looking through it on the microscope. I'll spin the other eyepiece. Did I see it only in my left eye, only in my right eye? Was it on the eyepiece? It will spin with the eyepiece. So that's a pretty easy way to, to find that spec. Um, if it's not spinning on the eyepiece, but it's only in your left eye, it may be in here. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, what if it's only on the 40x objective? Well, while you're looking through your 40x, you can spin it right here. Spin it a little bit. Unscrew it just a hair while you're looking. Did that speck move with the objective? You may have just found it. Um, what about the condenser? Sometimes it's a dirty condenser. These get dirty often. That's top surface right there, that Abbey condenser. I can loosen this little thumb screw and I can wiggle it. Again, I'm looking for that speck to wiggle as I wiggle the condenser. Last, I can turn this lens. Sometimes you can move these. Um, so we're trying to follow a process of elimination to find out where is that speck. Um, and then we'll talk about how to clean that speck. What if it's only on your camera screen? Um, there are some very critical things you don't want to do. You don't want to clean the inside of the optics with, your, uh, with any chemicals, any liquid. You don't want to ever touch the inside. So we're not ever going to go inside here or inside here or inside the back of an objective. We're not going to go inside the camera with any liquid. What if we've determined that the spec is on the camera? Um, general rule of thumb on your microscope and your camera is keep it clean, keep it covered, keep it here. Don't, don't leave this chip exposed. Um, but let's take off this part of the microscope. So we're looking right at this. Now, if there was a speck on the screen and I turned my camera and the speck does not move, it's on the camera. I know that's ironic. It's the backwards thing that I said earlier about spinning an eyepiece. If you spin the eyepiece and the spec spins, it's on the eyepiece. If you spin a camera and the spec on your TV screen does not move, it's really on here. People say, no, it can't be. It is. Just imagine that you have a sensor and a TV screen. If the spec is on the sensor, you're turning the camera, but the spec is not moving in relation to the sensor. It doesn't move on the TV. So that's how you determine. I'm spinning it and the spec does not spin. It's here. So again, don't go inside here with any kind of liquid. Um, hopefully, it's just a speck of dust. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to blow it off. Um, you may have canned air. You can use canned air. Um, be very careful with canned air because if you shake it or turn it upside down, the propellant is going to come out. You'll have much bigger problems on this camera sensor when you've got a bunch of speckled bubbles on there. Um, so if I'm going to use this, I'm going to evacuate it two or three times and then I'm just going to lightly and indirectly try to, try to blow it off. I'm, that was being very careful. I would prefer to use a hand puffer. Uh, this will be clean air. And I can go right in there and blow it off. How do I know if it's off? I can hover my camera, do a little wiggle wiggle and look at my screen. It may be gone. Maybe it moved over a spot. Uh, maybe there's three specs on there now. So, you know, we may try it again. Hover, check your screen if that didn't work. We're going to use a clean cotton swab and 
I'm going to touch one end, but I'm not going to touch that end. It's very clean, and I'm going to seal up my cotton swabs to make sure they stay clean. All right, so I'm going to keep these clean for future use. Now, this end that I haven't touched, watch carefully. Air didn't remove it, so I'm going to sweep the floor with clean cotton. So I'm going to go right on that sensor and one, two, three, four, five. And I brushed it all off this side. And sometimes it's not really the sensor you're touching. You're touching a glass filter that's right on top of the sensor. So again, I've just swept the floor. Hover, look at your screen, wiggle, specs gone, hopefully. If it's not, do it again. You, and we could do it different direction. One, two, three, four, five. So that's what I'm trying to do is just clean it off. And that is all I would ever do with a camera sensor. D don't ever use liquid on it. Just either blow it off or wipe it off. And the general rule of thumb is don't ever just leave it sitting out like this. Let's keep it clean. Keep it on your microscope. That's the best rule. All right. Other internal optics. The head. I'm remove the head. What if we determine that I could see it with my left eye but it's not on this eyepiece. You can even rotate and swap your eyepieces. That will confirm, well, it sure wasn't the eyepiece, right? So, it could be on that prism. Just as hard to clean as a camera sensor. The same rules apply. If we see a speck or if we knew it's there from our process of elimination, to clean that dust off, I'm taking the head off, I removed my eyepieces, they will fall out and hit the floor, so be careful there. Um, let's hold it like this blow it out. You can put it back on, put your eyepiece and look and see if you got it. You probably got it with a little puff of air. Again, usually this is clean. A piece of dust lands there, you can blow it off. Um, I could use that same cotton swab technique if I had to. And if sometimes you'll see it, you'll see a speck there and just reach in there, touch it. Clean cotton swab, touch it and get it off. Don't do a whole lot of wiping. Just get that speck off and then back on your microscope and you will get your eyepieces back on. Again, I'm not ever going to leave this exposed. i got to keep this thing clean, keep it covered. Um, so hopefully you found that spec on your camera or on your internal prisms, and you got it off with just air or cotton swabs. Um, so that is the way to remove a spec from internal optics. Um, next, we're going to clean our external optics. We are going to start with eyepieces. They're not very difficult to clean. I'll bet you've already figured out how to clean your eyepieces. Um, for cleaning eyepieces, the first thing, I'll start with a, a dust brush, which comes in the Pro Service Kit. Um, it's clean, so I'm just, if it's just getting dust off, that's easy. Um, same thing, I could use my puffer if it's just dust. Rarely is there anything in the back end of an eyepiece. Remember, don't go inside of anything, but I could blow that out. Almost never the case. It's always just dirty right there with mascara or uh, dust. So, in your lab, you probably have alcohol. This is isopropyl, um, ethyl alcohol. Um, you can use alcohol to clean optics um, in a pinch, and it works. But we have lens fluid in the Pro Service Kit that is the best. Um, it's made for optics. Um, so for this, we're gonna use our, our lens cleaning fluid. And I have lens paper. You probably have this too. You can buy it at a camera store, maybe even Walmart. Um, lens paper, lens fluid, that's really simple. Um, alcohol, if that's all you have. Um, I'm going to put just a tiny droplet there, just enough to dampen that. And I'm going to just use a circular motion and clean to the outside edge. I'm moving to a dry spot. Circular, outside, one more dry spot. Circle, 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 outside, push it off. Um, that's it, it's pretty easy to clean an eyepiece um, and repeat that process for your other eyepiece. All right, moving on to the objectives. Let's talk about these, uh, these short objectives you're not gonna have to worry about. Um, they don't touch oil, they don't touch the slide. Um, they're almost never dirty. It's almost always the 40X. When we have complaints and people say, I cannot see well through my microscope, it's almost always the 40X. Um, and it's often a matter of perspective. Um, 
Do you mean it's just blurry, I can't see anything, or is it just not quite as crisp as it used to be? Um, so there's a lot of degrees, but sometimes it's simply that we forgot to close our iris. Now, if you notice, there's a condenser under here. It's the Abbey condenser. Every microscope out there, it has an iris. It opens and closes just like your eyeball does. More light, less light. Actually, what it's doing, it's setting a cone of light. The rule of thumb to remember, and this will improve your microscope by doing this, the smaller the objective, the smaller the iris. So on my 4X, this should be almost all the way closed. On my 10X, a little bit open. On my 40X, maybe halfway open. If you've left this wide open, you're not gonna get good resolution out of these objectives, even if they're perfectly clean. So use your iris properly. That's the number one thing to make sure of before we uh, get to the cleaning process. Um, all right, so again, don't need to clean my 4X. I don't need to clean this 10X. I will clean this 40X, and this is kind of the, uh, the best thing you're gonna see on this video is how to clean a 40X objective. Now, customers often tell me, well, we clean it every day. Um, and what they do is, you know, they just wipe, wipe, wipe while it's on the microscope. Well, we cleaned it. We, we got some fluid, we cleaned it. And tomorrow, we cleaned it the other way. Um, we kept wiping it, but it's still blurry and it's still dirty as well because you can't see that little lens very well. It is so tiny. So what I want to do is I want to be able to see it well by taking an eyepiece, turn it backwards. The backwards eyepiece, it's kind of like a jeweler looks at a diamond. You've seen an eye loop. So a backwards eyepiece is a 10X magnifier. That little lens right there that we suspect may be dirty. If I put it where my eyeball goes, there's a focal point right there. Now I can look through this backwards. Look, I'm moving in. I'm, I've got my fingers touching each other so I can hold steady. Get some light on this lens from above. Don't lean over it. Get some light on it. Now move it in and out, depending on your eyepiece. Aha, there it is. I see it clear. I see it magnified 10 times. And what you often will say is, wow, that is dirty. Um, now what you see is that lens is recessed. And if you've been wiping this way every day, you've piled up oil and debris on this side. Tomorrow, you've wiped it back across. The oil just keeps streaking across that lens. Um, now that you can see that it's recessed and you can see it well, you'll know how to clean it. So, let's assume that it is very dirty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go, again, keep the clean side of my cotton swab and keep them sealed. Now, I'm going to get in here and try to clean the debris out. The debris may be in that little recess. So I'm trying to clean it. I'm using different spots here of my uh, wipe. And look at it again. Now, um, now I'm going to put a little fluid on here. Get this a little bit wet, just a little. And I'm going at it again. And again, a circular, I can even spin, spin this because I know now that it's recessed and I'm trying to clean out the groove. So going in there and spinning that um, or turning your objective and kind of cleaning out the groove and I'm going back with my eyepiece again, backwards, and I say, yep, I'm making progress. Um, and again, you may end up doing this 10 times. Um, and that final, you can, again, get some fluid on here and you can go in there. Sometimes I fold up a corner get myself a little corner point and get it in there and clean it out like that. And then a little more of a dry spot. Watch, fold up a little corner, get in there. And then you're gonna look at it again. And a, maybe 10 minutes later, you will get this objective looking just like brand new. I want that to be as clean, oil-free mirror surface. And then you put that back on your microscope, you'll be amazed at the difference. Now it's a very clean objective. So that's the trick. Use that backwards eyepiece, look at that objective, um, and you'll be able to clean it extremely well. Um, so I'm gonna put that back in. Again, notice I don't leave my optics open. I keep everything covered as best I can. Um, 100X, it's very similar to the 40. It also, it always gets into the oil because it's made for oil. Um, 
I'm not going to take it off and clean it because it's going to follow the same process as the 40X. But it's easier to clean because the 100X is going into the oil next time you use it and the next time and the next time. So the rule of thumb on the 100X is I do like to clean it after every use, but I'm going to do the quick clean, just quick. Get the oil off, at least get the oil off. And then once every week or so, you can remove it and you can do the detailed cleaning with a backwards eyepiece. If you don't get all the oil off of that surface, it's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly free of oil because it's going back into the oil. 40X is the critical one. You need to get the oil off that 40X. All right, let's move on. So your, your eyepieces and your objectives are now clean. The rest is easy. Um, this top lens on your condenser is right there. Um, when it gets dust on it, and believe me, it gets dust on it, it's just the one thing that's sitting there exposed, like your eyepieces, um, you'll see it. Um, you may have identified earlier when you jiggled it that you saw dust moving, and a lot of times you can see it right there. So I'm going to use more lens paper and the same process as cleaning an eyepiece. Dampen this, little spot, notice that? And I can move my objectives out of the way and just give it a quick wipe with a wet spot and then go to the dry spot and one more dry spot it's that quick um, you can take it out if you want to usually there's a little screw that releases it but that's it do this probably every few days clean that surface right there along with eyepieces um, and same thing down here exact same story I'm gonna put a little fluid on here I'm gonna clean again in a circular motion And go to the outer edge and then a dry spot and my final dry spot and now we've cleaned all of the microscope from top to bottom we've even cleaned the internal optics with our uh, air and our swabs um, so that's the process for cleaning a microscope hopefully your microscope will be just like new it should last you many many years if you have any questions call LW Scientific or go on our website um, watch the video again, and I hope you'll be able to keep your microscope well-maintained and clean. Thank you.